Hey everyone, I'm Dave. I'm here again to post another video about how the show no one even watches anymore is bad for the 400th time in a row. I'm taking a break from writing my trashy abridged series that would have been way better if I let Dredd write the thing out, but no, I never let him write anything because I'm so self-entitled and stuff. Wait, what are you doing? Uh, are you doing? Hi, how you doing? Hey, what, what are you doing? <laughs> that, that, no, no, no. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is The Real Dave, and I'm back with another video essay. I'm sure you've all been waiting for this one. One of the main focuses of High Guardian Spies happens to be the school, High Guardian Academy. Now you'd think one of the main focuses of the show itself would be kind of important and done well, but this is High Guardian Spice. It's not done well, you already know that. But how is it bad, you may ask? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Firstly, it's inconsistent, the teachers suck, and, of course, there's a lot of crimes that this school has committed. CPS would have a fucking field day with the amount of child endangerment charges these people would be facing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to be splitting this video into sections again, first going over the inconsistencies with the school, the crimes they committed, and, last but not least, the teachers. Can I help? Okay, fine. You can have one section. I demand the school safety. Oh, come on. I wanted to do that one. Fuck you. I want it. Okay, fine. Whatever. As you probably heard, my friend Lord Dredd is going to be accompanying me today. I shall be judge, jury, and executioner on this uh, school crime. Why are you talking like Skeletor? Because I can and it's fun. Oh my god. So, uh, what are we doing exactly? Oh, I'm going to be talking about the inconsistency first. Oh god, you're going to be here for till 2045. Ah, uh, fuck this. I'm going to my fucking section. Oh, uh, you're just, so you're just leaving now? Yes, I am. I ha You have my phone number. Just tell me when it's my turn. I'll, uh, I'll see you in 2045. Uh, Okay, Bye. let's... All right, let's just get started before this gets any more confusing. Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs! Eat them up, beat them up, beat them up, beat them up! Since we're going over the flaws with the Academy, why don't we start with the biggest one first? That being the constant inconsistencies with how it's run and how it's presented. Now, normally I'd like to save the best for last, but I think this one's very important and we should probably tackle it right at the start. Now, I've noticed a pattern with the way that this show is written. If you've watched the show like I have, you probably picked up on this yourself. Maybe you couldn't name it, but you could definitely sense it was there, like a specter hiding in the background. One of the major flaws with this whole thing is that this show does not know what it wants to be. This problem bleeds into literally every single aspect of this show, whether it be the magic system, the characterization, or the weird plot beats. Pretty much every single bad thing in this show can basically be explained by the writers just not knowing what the fuck they were making. According to the creator Ray Rodriguez in an interview, they were already hiring storyboard artists before the first script was finished. We were already starting to write scripts when we moved there and we were All already right. starting to hire people. Like we started hiring our storyboard artists before um, the first episode script was done. and. That was, you know, a recipe for disaster, <laughs> and it immediately caused problems because um, we were boarding before it was, you know, the script was locked, and it only spiraled from there. Now, I'm sure you're all aware by now that High Guardian Spice was pressed for time, pressed for budget, and pressed for pretty much anything that would have made this work. And the staff not exactly being on the same page of what they were making is a real problem, and it shows, it really shows. If the video made by Daft Pina about this show was correct, the addition of violent and gory moments to this show was a last minute one that wasn't actually intended to be in the original product. Apparently Crunchyroll wasn't transparent with what they wanted the show to be at the start, as they then asked the team to bait everything up, telling the writers, Actually, the show is for adults. With Ray's backlog of High Guardian Spice material prior to the actual production, I must make it obvious that this show was most likely just going to be a kid's cartoon. Like, the universe, you know. It's not very surprising that a show is super inconsistent when it has production like this. People didn't know if this was going to be a kid's show or super violent or what. The sudden scenes of tonal inconsistency, like characters brutally murdering monsters with blood splattering everywhere, or, or people randomly cursing for no reason, don't really fit with the style and pretty much everything else within the show itself. All of this ends us with a product that's basically marketed to nobody. It's not for kids, it's not for adults, just who the hell is this for? But now you're probably wondering, what the fuck does any of this have to do with the school system? A lot. A lot, actually. When I said that these production inconsistencies bled into every single part of the show, I wasn't over-exaggerating, it's just true. 
To demonstrate this, I have one major question for you. What is High Guardian Academy for? What do they do? Why do they do it? You may think, oh, that's pretty simple. They train guardians. Well, what is a guardian? Do they just fight monsters? Is that it? Well, no. Sage's mother said she was going to school to become a healer. I'm thrilled for you to learn about elixirs. Very important for a future healer. Sage doesn't really do that much healing throughout the show, honestly. Unless you count the time she cured the entire class of being poisoned by their own teacher. We'll get back to that. But Guardians don't actually seem to have any prime objective. The school teaches a bunch of different things that have very little to do with actually fighting stuff. And on top of that, there's Everything Hours, which allows you to pretty much do whatever you want. It's kind of like if you went to a police academy to learn how to be a police officer, and they started teaching you how to crochet and bake for no reason. I mean, it's an interesting skill, but it has nothing to do with the prime objective of the school. It's heavily implied that this place is meant to train warriors as they send them out on death missions, have them train in martial arts and weapon skills. But as for what they're doing all this training for, we just don't know. It's never said. It's almost like the writers just didn't have a plan for what this school was supposed to be in the first place. They just wrote Girls Magical School on a paper and then just went with it without asking any more questions about what this school was for or what it's about. You'd think knowing exactly what this school is about would be kind of important, considering it's one of the main parts of the story and pretty much drives every single action the characters take. So all of this ends us up with a school that's playing loosey-goosey with teaching people how to actually fight and defend themselves, and then sending them off to suicide missions where they very likely will die. You can't on one hand have a school that's meant to teach hardcore warriors, and then also have the school be populated by people like Slime Boy. Now don't get me wrong, I like Slime Boy as much as the next guy, but he isn't really warrior material. Tell me, if a dragon comes down from the sky and starts eyeing him, what is he gonna do? Sing at it? Lord, frozen peas down your shirt He's made up of meanness and hurt <laughs> But now that we're on the topic of the student body of this school, who do you think the triad would accept in? Well, they're trying to train warriors, we assume. That's the most likely answer. So they want people who are strong and powerful and can hold their own in a fight. I mean, logically, that would be the case, after all. High Guardian Academy doesn't just accept anyone you know. High Guardian Academy doesn't just accept anyone you know. High Guardian Academy doesn't just accept anyone you know. Hey. This is Aster. He's not only a contender for the most useless character in the show, he is the most useless character in the show. He's also an idiot. Not that I blame him, because the people who let him in this school are also idiots. This man is so brain dead he can hardly hold his sword straight. He's a serial screw-up who nearly gets himself killed just trying to do basic guardian training. Even Rosemary, the queen of fucking things up, doesn't even come close to the level of stupidity and ignorance that this man displays. So this presents a question. How in the righteous name of Parnell did this moron ever get accepted into this academy? And I can answer that question. It's the answer to pretty much every single logical inconsistency in this entire show. The writers wanted something to happen, but didn't know how to do it right. So instead of learning how to do it right and fixing it, they just throw it in anyway without thinking. Whenever there's a dumb joke they want to make, or a dumb character they want to introduce, or a dumb storyline they want to throw in for no reason, the answer as to why the logic doesn't follow is because they weren't thinking logically when they made this. I wouldn't be surprised if they completely forgot that the line Sage's father said even happened. They were never planning on making this school a prestigious place for talented warriors because there wasn't a plan at all. It's the same reason why a school that's okay with poisoning their own students and killing their own students and pointless suicide missions also happens to have an ethics class. Ah uh, yes, us guardians are really big on our ethics with all that child murder we perpetuate. Sorry, like, is that... is that what... You're all into that, like, killing children and that. Maybe that's just me, but that's, I kind of draw a line there at child murder. Now, if you want to tell a story about some hardcore military school that, like, trains children as warriors to send them off to die in caves for no reason, you can do that. Or maybe you just want to tell a story about a wacky magic school that has some dark humor here and there. 
The problem is they flip-flop between these two with no consistency whatsoever. It puts a huge contrast between what's being shown on the screen and what the other characters are saying. On one hand, you have characters talking about loving each other and protecting one another, and then you also show them sending off kids to die and laughing about it. Uh, only 80%? That's right, Zinnia. The cave's a real death trap. You've heard the legends. All of Redbud's clothes are from students who plunge to their death. <laughs> It creates this weird sensation that makes everything that happens in the story feel off-putting and awkward. The incongruity between the school being portrayed as this happy fun place where you can become a bard or learn how to make pottery, and also it being a place where they train you to fight to the death with crab monsters, causes the school system to just be a festering pile of nonsense. One inconsistency that stood out to me the most came from episode 11, which also happens to be my least favorite episode of the show. And trust me, that is a high bar. Okay, so what do we know about this school and how it's portrayed violence towards its student body so far? Well, the students are faced with physical harm pretty much every single day. They get eaten by acidic plants, thrown into lethal obstacle courses filled with weapons that kids have died in before we see the skeletons. And overall, the death of their own students are largely considered to be a joke by members of the staff. Capping all of this off, Amaryllis basically goes on the magical equivalent of a school shooting, blasting students with laser beams to the point where they're sent flying into the air. And she doesn't even get detention. So putting all of this information together, it seems pretty apparent that the school just does not care about students getting injured. At least that would be the logical conclusion you'd come to. Well, guess what? You'd be wrong. I said shut up! Oh, no. <laughs> Snapdragon, stop! In episode 11, Snapdragon violently responds to Cal insulting him by pushing him to the ground and just beating the ever-loving shit out of the guy. Based on all the other information we have about the school, the punishment for this should basically just be nothing. But Caraway doesn't threaten him with, I don't know, detention or something for punching one of the students. No, he threatens him with a full-on suspension. Cut the sarcasm, Snapdragon. The triad would want me to suspend you. Based on what we know about this school so far, why the hell is Snapdragon being talked down to at all? If anything, Caraway should be encouraging him. Hey, way to go, kid. Nice use of violence. Great teamwork. Nice use of violence. It's pretty obvious what happened here. The person who wrote this line probably thought this school was supposed to be like a normal school, kinda, where if you beat someone up, you're threatened with something like suspension. What these people somehow missed was the literal 10 episodes worth of buildup that showed that this school just does not care about its student body getting injured. This is exactly what I mean about this inconsistency problem. Characters are saying one thing, but their actions completely contradict it. They have an ethics class which seemingly discourages violence against others while also promoting violence against others. They berate students for taking violent and reactive responses to things while also teaching them how to kill and pushing them to murder monsters in caves. It just doesn't make any sense. Now I know what you guys are probably thinking right about now. Oh, you're just being nitpicky. None of this matters. It's just a cartoon with flying dragons. Who cares about logic? Is something. Now, I'm not saying that this show has to remain 100% with real world logic all the time. Obviously, it's not gonna do that. It has magic. Broken magic, but I've already went over that. What I am saying is that it has to remain consistent with the world building it provides. If the writer sets something up to work one way, but then immediately ignore it five minutes later just so that they can make a bad joke, then we have a problem. It makes all of the world building and characterization look completely arbitrary and pointless. How am I supposed to get invested in this story if the logic just keeps randomly changing every time the writers want to do something different? It's like if you were trying to play a chess match, but at random intervals, the rules on how the pieces move just changed and no one informed you of how. It would become impossible for you to get invested in the game because you have no idea how to play the damn thing. I don't know how to play chess. Me neither. But I'm great at analogies. Consistency in your writing and world building is very important if you want any sort of investment in your story. Unfortunately, we don't get that here because everything is so poorly explained and poorly shown that it ends up being an inconsistent mess. If the writers don't understand what's going on, how is the audience expected to? Case in point, this whole school is riddled with inconsistencies. The teachers make no sense, the rules make no sense, and the world building especially makes no sense. Now in these next few sections, we're going to be going over some smaller problems with the school. They're still problems, of course, but they're lesser than the big inconsistency one. 
It's more me and my friend finally letting off steam after suffering through this 12 episode mess. But now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'm going to pass the mic to my friend Dredd so we can talk about every single crime that this school has committed. Reese's Buffs, Reese's Buffs, eat em up, beat em up, beat em up, beat em up. Hello everyone, I am Lord Dredd, but for the sake of this section, I shall be Judge Dredd because Lingarth apparently is without law. And like the good judge I am, I shall bring the law to its streets. High Guardian Academy has no shortage of criminal offenses, ranging from child abuse to straight up biological warfare. You name it, they've probably done it. So where do we begin? Well, let's start with child abuse. They have child abuse down to a scientific level. The amount of psychological trauma these children go through is enough to make Chris Chan blush. Not only is child abuse tolerated in this school, it's basically mandated. They've created a cult-like culture where people have to put themselves in unnecessary danger just to prove themselves to be guardians. These students are basically psychologically conditioned to perform dangerous tasks just so they can call themselves guardians, despite not knowing what a guardian is. None of us should be going in there. Why would any of you choose to walk into this nightmare? Um, because we want to be guardians. Well, ho, Zinnia, going for the old voluntary expulse. Students are left confused and scared, constantly facing life-threatening scenarios and extreme trauma because we want to be guardians. The students are pushed into being hardcore warriors and to suppress their fear because we want to be guardians. Are we seeing the problems now? These poor kids are being led into life-threatening scenarios and being attracted to the idea of becoming a guardian like an anglerfish attracting its prey. There is little to no excuse for how dangerous this school is. I imagine the death toll is something along the lines of 50 a year. And that is with some overly generous rounding. Some will excuse this behavior by saying it's tough love to inspire them to grow. But this isn't a military camp, it's a school. And even if it was a military camp, they likely don't kill their recruits on the first day by poisoning them. This school isn't training them to grow, it's training them to be heartless sociopaths, bent on the idea of survival of the fittest. Fuck guarding Lingarth, they need to guard themselves from the amount of shit the teachers throw at them every day. If they don't succeed at their class goal, the teachers will hold them, stopping them from eating lunch, basically threatening them with starvation if they don't do things right. This is cult behavior! Not only are they a threat to the students, they are a threat to pretty much everyone else around them. This is the kind of place that lets loose fire-breathing dragons next to a forest without a care in the world. Whenever other people are facing troubles, they'll send in inexperienced children to deal with the problem. And we all know how that ended. I, I can't. The leaders of this school are so incompetent they don't even realize when life is being drained out of the earth. And this is something their own students easily find out while they remain oblivious. They have constant infestations of creatures in their school that become so problematic they need to force the kids out for days on end. The health inspector must love this place. They leave students unsupervised with dangerous weapons. Every kid with a terror sphere could go on a magical school shooting, as Dave put it. This means every child could turn into a murderer, which would not be surprising due to the warlike culture the school propagates. And student-on-student -student violence is not an uncommon thing, as Snapdragon shows. But the kids and parents for some reason tolerate all of this abuse and failed leadership. Why, you ask? Because say it with me, folks. We want to be guardians. This place is a hazard, and it should not be allowed to continue its existence. I command the school is to be shut down and its leaders executed by order of the crown. That is all. Back to Dave. Reese's Buffs, Reese's Buffs. Eat em up, beat em up, beat em up, beat em up. Ah, the teachers. Everyone loves the teachers, right? Honestly, it's kind of hard to say a lot about the teachers since really they aren't that relevant to the story most of the time. It's a good thing then that most of the time they're on screen, they're either doing something really stupid or really irrelevant. Now, outside of Caraway, you've probably forgotten most of the teachers' names, which isn't surprising. Most of the teachers are pretty forgettable characters that are only used to push the main cast into doing stuff. But if we're gonna talk about the teacher characters, we should probably mention the elephant in the room. He's on screen right now. Is it any surprise that this guy has become a major talking point of pretty much every single review of the series, whether it be a scathing one or a positive one? Now despite the spotlight that's been placed on this guy and how he supposedly represents pretty much everything wrong with this show, he really isn't that bad. Actually, no, that's a lie. He is bad, but not for the reason you think. Now, sure, he is a self-insert and a very blatant one at that. 
Most of his dialogue is pretty clunky, but that's par for the course for this show. But the main thing when it comes to his relevance in the show is his lack of relevance to the show. Honestly, when it comes to the story, a lot of the time he just doesn't matter, which is weird. Out of all the dumb and forgettable teachers in the show, he's the one that's featured the most. He had his little sidebar conversation with Snapdragon, he's best friends with Rosemary's mom, and he was also attacked by Mandrake in the last episode. It seems like this guy is just getting a lot of focus from the writers. I wonder why. But despite all of this extra focus, he still just comes across as a hollow character with no importance to the story. When he's not just deadpan staring into the camera explaining how a certain facet of the magic system works like we're five-year-olds, and you know which one, I don't even need to say it. He's largely just sitting around dumping exposition in the most boring way possible. He comes across as less of a character and more like a tool that the writers use in certain ways just to get points across. And that holds true for most of the teachers. They're not there to be their own characters, they're just there to dump out life lessons like they're some kind of philosophy vending machine. I guess that makes sense to a certain extent because they're supposed to be teachers, but what exactly are they teaching? Well, Caraway's class largely revolves around sacred languages, whatever the fuck that means. They're learning to translate runes or some shit. I don't see how that's in any way relevant to fighting dragons and stopping yourself from dying every day, but whatever, just waste their time, I guess. Well, if we're gonna get brutally murdered next period, we might as well have a rest hour. So his class is just kind of pointless nonsense that the characters just kind of slog through for no reason. I don't think they ever even use anything they learn in Caraway's class at any other part of the show. Imagine if during one of their dungeon runs, the girls came across some magical runes they needed to translate, and they used Caraway's class to, okay, I'm thinking about good writing now, let's stop, that's not in the budget. But you get the point, 90% of what this guy does doesn't matter. The only real major impact he has is on Snapdragon, and by the time that happens, the show's already over. They spend so much time just dicking around with pointless nonsense that they skip over parts of the story that could have been interesting or fun. But out of all the teachers who barely have any character, there is one that has a lot of character. It's just unfortunate that she has a very shitty character. Good luck, darlings! If you die in there, I'm keeping your stuff! <laughs> I'm going to be very upfront with my bias right from the get-go. I despise this bitch. She, to me, truly represents everything that's wrong with this show, more so than Caraway ever could. She's a sociopathic monster who constantly puts children's lives in danger and doesn't give a shit. And unlike the other sociopathic characters, she just isn't funny. The entire time she's on screen, I'm just questioning why the hell this woman has a job. This woman is just straight up a walking contradiction. She somehow got hired into this prestigious academy that's largely around to teach the next generation of Guardians. It makes me wonder how there's supposed to be a next generation of Guardians if she keeps fucking killing all of them. When we're first introduced to Redbud, yes, that's her name, she just straight up poisons all of the students in her class just to be a dick. She also expects the students to somehow be able to make a cure despite the fact they haven't learned anything about potions yet. It's kind of like if you showed up to a med school and on your first day they required you to perform an open heart surgery on a patient going critical. The stakes are extremely dire, you have no idea what you're doing, and you're likely panicking and losing your mind. Not only this, but the students have also been mutated to the point where some of them can't even use their hands anymore. Just how in the hell did she expect anyone to survive this? If Sage wasn't there with her Mary Sue powers, pretty much everyone in this class would have just fucking died right there. It kind of makes me wonder how they would approach the parents of these children after this death occurred. Imagine sending off your son to go to some prestigious academy, and then they come back with a letter saying, Uh, yeah, sorry, he died on the first day in the first period when he went to potions class. No sane, respectable parent would ever send their children off to this death trap of a school. The solution to this problem would have been super easy. They should have just had the potions teacher say, Oh, I was lying about it killing you the whole time. It still would have been a major dick move putting all those children under all that stress right away, but it would have been a lot better than actually killing them. And despite all of this characterization showing her to be a ruthless monster with no remorse, she for some reason shows care for the girl's situation when the dragon dies in episode 11? Like what? He must be put down. I'll do it. Rosemary, I can do it me. if you need. They had exactly one teacher with solid characterization up until this point just for them to fuck it up right at the very end. They can't even be consistent with their terrible characters. Like, what even is this show? 
But I've wasted too much time talking about this bitch already. Let's move on to the other teachers. We have Moss Flox. He's the blacksmithing teacher. He's not important. We have Dretch. She's the uh, ethics teacher. She's not important. We have that uh, martial arts teacher I forgot the name of. He's not important. And uh, I think that's pretty much all of them. We got through that one at record pace. Oh yeah, there's also that horse lady too. I don't even know if she has a name. Uh, but she's not important, so it doesn't really matter. That pretty much sums up all of the teachers. There's also the triad, but like, who fucking cares at this point? They probably suck. Like almost every other character in this show. It's a fucking law of nature at this point that these characters end up being trash or completely useless. Most of the time, both. But you're probably tired of hearing my voice by now, so I think I'm gonna end it by saying this. Most of the teachers are completely irrelevant, and the ones that are relevant, just, they just fucking suck. Good, great, glad we cleared that up. Now let's just go to conclusions and end this already, I'm tired. Reese's Buffs, Reese's Buffs. Eat em up, beat em up, beat em up, beat em up. In summary, if you haven't gotten it by now, this school sucks. No shit, Sherlock. Shut up. The writing for it is riddled with inconsistencies. The school has committed dozens upon dozens of crimes that make absolutely no sense. And to top it all off, the teachers are terrible people. The troubled production and terrible writing of the show caused pretty much everything from the school system to the magic system to every system, really, to just suck. Everything devolves into an inconsistent mess that makes it a confusing watch. It makes it a pain to sit through with the logic being all over the place and making absolutely no sense. I completely understand why this show has been analyzed to death. It is absolutely fascinating the amount of screw-ups that this show goes through. It's fundamentally broken on almost every level. But yeah, I think we're pretty much finished here. 1,000 subscribers! Let's fucking go! Right. Uh, anyway, I think I'm gonna... Get the fucking party rolling! Okay, I'm gonna kick him out of my house now. <laughs> Get over here! Yep. <laughs>